uh, yeah, th thanks, uh, Kunal. But I think you're bang on. Uh, and you, when you talk about security, is just not one piece. Piece uh, which starts from how do you onboard a customer, and then how do you service him? So there's an operational angle to him. There's a reconciliation angle, and obviously technology is paramount in all this, right? I think what we have done and uh, uh, in the country overall is the seeding as to when a customer registered for UPI, that's a very robust process, right? And we use something called two-factor authentication, which is common across the world now, but we also do a very unique mobile uh, binding that is there. So this mobile binding and with a very rigorous process of when a customer is added, uh, for example, uh, till now what we were doing besides the additional checks, for a customer to get added onto UPI, he, used, he needed to use his debit card and the debit card pin. So that works as an additional layer. In fact, just recently, uh, we have launched that you can use your Aadhaar. The gentleman before us spoke about Aadhaar, right? which is a unique identity and a unique uh, solution that we have in the country. So we are actually bringing Aadhaar also onto the table, uh, which will actually add to the security. By the, uh, as a matter of fact, I think there was a question earlier as to what are we doing to get more and more women uh, empowered on UPI. Actually, we do see Aadhaar as a way to do it because a lot of women in the country may not have debit cards or they may not have active debit cards. So that's always been the you know legacy that it continues. But Aadhaar, I think if you do a population, I mean, uh, practically 95% of the women in the country are covered and they use Aadhaar for various things. Women spoke about uh, the DBT and benefits. So they're already used to it. They know they have to keep it secure. So we're actually introducing other. So it works for both sides. It adds to the security. Uh, and to what uh, what we have done is, uh, I think uh, besides the marketing and the communication that goes on jointly in the industry, I think what, which is very interesting and unique to India is our regulator introduced something called online dispute resolution. Right? What it, uh, I believe it does is actually, if you take any uh, payment instrument anywhere in the world and in case, and disputes do happen, right? Timeouts would happen. These are things that you cannot completely enumerate. What is the reaction and response? Can you be proactive about it, right? And that is where you can actually protect a lot of money because the money movement and the interclearing, uh, the bank interbank clearance could happen with a delay. So they have introduced some things which is online. So imagine this, if you got debited and you've not got the service, you've not consumed it, on the same app, you can instantly raise a request. That request comes online from your bank or from your merchant onto NPCI, that is us in the central league. We go back to the bank where your account has got debited. We go back to the bank where the merchant belongs, and they could be two different banks, reconcile it with our data and try to resolve in 30 minutes, right? So from a security, there are multiple things that have been done. It starts from how do you bind? How do you secure the tunnels? How do you secure the channels? How do you secure the onboarding and so on? And I think the regulator in the country has been extremely, uh, you know, responsive when it came to it, right? Whether it's two-factor authentication, whether it was... Uh, introducing a cooling period where it was introducing limits. So some of the new products, when they come out, they don't go with a regular limit, right? The limit is constrained to a certain amount. The number of count of transactions is purposely configured and constrained till the time we see that the larger ecosystem is understanding, accepting it. And also we observe patterns of risk in that, right? And the moment we start feeling comfortable and confident along with the ecosystem, then in a very calibrated way, it's opened up. And you know what, I, 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 this process is dynamic. It's responsive to the environment as it evolves. And I think this is very important. So it will enable you to catch problems as arise and address them and resolve them very quickly. Thank you. Um, our next question is from, uh, I believe, uh, Rodney Taylor. Are there any technical linkages or interfaces to Adhar? Uh, this is the previous presentation. Uh, the, uh, the, digital, the digital identity initiative for authentication and so on. Sure. Uh, so uh, Kunal, I'll take that if you don't mind. So uh, yeah, obviously, uh, you know, uh, when you have two, two great platforms in the country, you want to leverage and ride on them. So there is a network effect. So clearly that's been on our minds. And uh, we right now, as I just mentioned, we just recently launched it. It's not really out in the public. Uh, in, I mean, it's not yet picked up and we've not really gone and promoted it in a big way. But now uh, we have something called uh, enabling customers to use UPI and registering using Aadhaar, which we believe is the next level of uh, getting uh, it more secure and reducing the friction. So that's the first linkage that we've established. 
uh, let's see how that goes. We believe that will help us to get a few more uh, million uh, consumers onto the UPI bandwagon and benefit both the platforms. And I think once that is done, we will keep looking out for more opportunity to leverage and synergize. But that's step one. Let's see how that goes. Excellent. Just checking the, the note with the questions here. Um, I, I think we have to, oh, oh there, there is one, I'm sorry. And this is a question uh, from Vanessa. Is Bitcoin payment widely used in India? If so, what are the implications this might have on the existing regulatory framework as well? Uh, I, I think uh, it's a pretty tough one to take, right? Because at the end of the day, we are not a regulator, right? And there are opinions and views about it. Uh, well, does Bitcoin exist in the country? Yes, it does. Uh, uh, and a lot of youngsters, uh, people not my age, people younger than me, uh, especially in the startup community, they're pretty active on that. Uh, so it's a wait and watch. I think it's a wait and watch. Uh, I think a lot of regulators are looking at I wouldn't use the word Bitcoin uh, because, you know, Bitcoin gets very specific, uh, but digital currencies, I think a lot of uh, regulators and central governments are trying to understand better, trying to be as, uh, uh, there, there's enough research being done as far as I am aware of. And uh, uh, I think central bank digital currency is uh, perhaps something which is the first thing that would take off. So I think we're all trying to understand it better and appreciate what it would take. Uh, but having said that, from an NPCI point of view, uh, when we look at, uh, you know, digital currency and tokenization, what we wanted to make sure is that uh, UPI, which is our payment railroad, or you can call the protocol, is this ready for non-fiat currencies? And uh, Can we, in our framework, manage your digital currency? And the answer to that, yes, when we designed the protocol, we did factor for it. So we really don't know what would happen on the digital currency front as and when it takes off or no, or what would be a regulatory view or a central entity view on it. Uh, but what we are trying to do is that, look, that's not a controllable by us. But if it does happen, then how well are we orchestrating this and how well are we planning that if people, it becomes a reality to people want to use it for shopping or exchange of some value, then can UPI railroad support it? And the answer to that is so far, the research we have done is we are finding a lot of tick marks in the positive. So. Great. Thank you very much. And uh, I don't think that there are any further questions in the, I don't see any further questions. So I would like to thank you. Uh, Madam S.G., sorry uh, to interrupt. Yes. Uh, there is one question in the chat box, probably uh, it wasn't uh, posted in the Q&A. Right. Thank you. Could you read it? Sure. Please. Sure. If I may. So it is from Ghana, and uh, and they ask that in Ghana, where the internet connectivity is a major issue for many people in rural area, how can this solution benefit those in the rural areas? Yeah, uh, Kunal, should I take that? Yeah, I'm good. So uh, you know, I, I think uh, internet being omnipresent is a baseline right these days. So. Uh, I think in India, uh, barring a few pockets, internet connectivity is there. I would say it's a bit patchy. So it's not that internet connectivity is not there, right? Uh, and when, when I look at that problem from a technology point of view, first, I think it's the telecoms which will solve that uh, rather than us, uh, the internet problem, right? So it's not, uh, I can see Mr. Sakya smiling about it, but yeah, that's, that stands true. And I believe they are on the verge of doing that, right? Uh, especially with 4G, 5G coming in. So that's one. The second is what we have actually worked is, is that how could we work on low bandwidth, right? And in a patchy environment, I think that's the problem more technically we wanted to solve. And by, there are by products like UPI Lite and uh, IVR. So we've sort of done a solution on IVR where you can do UPI. Uh, you, know, it's like a, you know, it's like a call service because the phone lines are available over there. So we have done some of these solutions and we are seeing some decent traction happening over there. We also did something called as a USSD solution. Uh, not that widely adopted, yeah, but it serves in those pockets, right? So our attempt is uh, to constantly solve for patchy networks and a uh, low bandwidth uh, kind of solution. Recently, we have come out with something uh, called uh, UPI Lite that's in the kitchen right now, yet to hit the market, which solves one part of a offline situation, not completely, right? So that's the larger posturing that we have on this right now. 
uh, if there is a need as we go ahead obviously uh, you know back in the kitchen we do a lot of experiments with offline and those kind of things but i wouldn't say it's market ready at this point in time so that's how we tackle that great thank you so much i uh, i don't think there are any more questions and we're coming you know we're coming close to the end of the session but i i have to say this is has been truly a uh, a remarkable achievement, you know, um, and I referred earlier the whole issue of the, the versatility and the flexibility of the system and that you're reaching with the Aadhaar and this system 99% um, of the population, that is phenomenal. And uh, I, I think, you know, the information you've been, you've presented this morning has been so useful, so beneficial, and I think it will serve as an inspiration to other countries. I mean, just the the, the vast population uh, that you've been able to reach 99% of your population in a relatively sm short space of time is a testimony as to the, you know, the efficacy of what you're doing. So I can congratulate you. And with that, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Kunal and uh, Arif. I really appreciate it. I'm going to turn back over now to our MC, Nikki Shudrosi.